All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over Google ad extensions. So when you create a campaign, you have the option of creating ads and also ad extensions. So there's a lot of different Google ad extensions and they've continued to add more and more, it seems like, over the years. Uh, so it started with site links and then call out extensions and then structured snippets. And there's a lot of different options here. So what we're gonna do first is open our search campaign and you can see some of our ad groups. So what we can do is come into ads and extensions and we're gonna come into extensions here. So right at the top, you're gonna to see extensions. So you click on that. It's gonna show any of the extensions here that you choose. Um, so our filter has it just set up for site link extensions. You can choose all of them though if you want and look at all your different extensions. So if you just click on all extension types, click apply, it's gonna show all the extensions you have created. So we're just gonna click on X here. And now what we can do is create new ad extensions. So I'm gonna go through all of these here for a little bit um, and show you really how to create them and how to take advantage of different ad extensions. So as we set them up, it'll kind of show you what they look like in an ad. But I did a quick search here for marketing software just to show you some different advertisements and what the ad extensions look like. So the first one is marketing360.com. So right here where it says services, marketing, CRM, email, SMS, social, video, design, reputation, payments, that's a structured snippet. Um, so they selected services as their structured snippet and then they entered all the different services here. Um, then down at the bottom, these are site link extensions, so local listing management, pay-per-click testimonial. So these generally send traffic to different pages on the website. And they don't have to, but that's generally how people use them. So if someone's searching for Surfside PPC or something like that, I can send people to my contact page. I can send people to my newsletter. I can send people to a specific blog post that matches their search. So a lot of different options when it comes to ad extensions. So next example down here is NetSuite. Um, so if we look, this is a description line and then it looks like it starts to become call extensions right here. So ideal for 20 plus employees, ideal for 20 plus users, marketing automation for employee size of 20 plus. Um, so that looks like what it is is a call extension that might just be their description line too. But that's generally how, not call extension, call out extension. That's generally how call out extensions look like, just kind of quick little blurbs of information about whatever it is that you're searching and then down here they have site links as well um, so that's just a couple of different examples of what ad extensions look like you can find a lot of different examples as you're creating advertisements so over to the right they're always going to show a preview of what it looks like on mobile what it looks like on desktop desktop so you can see what ad extensions actually look like so first one is site link extensions. So you can add these to the account level. Um, so they would be across all of your campaigns, the campaign level and the ad group level, which is true for pretty much most extensions. Um, I'll go through that as we create the different ad extensions here. Um, the other thing you could do is use existing extensions. So as you create site links, it'll have a list here of all your different site links. So our first one is farmhouse goals shop. So we could just use that as our existing, click on save. We'll go to create new. And when you're creating site links, what you get is some text, a description line one, description line two, and a final URL. So you want to enter all of those out there. So for example, for our farmhouse goal search campaign, I could do farmhouse shop and then send people to our final URL of farmhousegoals.com slash shop. And you can see it down here. Um, we already did that as our one example. So we could do farmhouse goals blog and send people directly to our blog. So site link number two, we can do something like maybe we're running a giveaway. So we do farmhouse decor giveaway and try to get people to sign up for that so they can see that and we'll enter description line one, description line two, and a final URL, of course. Um, you could also just send them right to your homepage so you can enter another site link down here and we'll just do home and just get people to go right to our homepage and maybe see the different options we have. So you generally want to add at least four site links to your campaign. Um, but I like to use site links at the ad group level. So if you select the ad group level, you could do something like farmhouse sinks, for example, we'll click on done. So now it's going to say you can create new, it's going to enter the ones you already have there. But what I can do is when someone's searching for farmhouse sinks, I could do something like stainless steel farmhouse sinks. So we could do copper farmhouse sinks and you can enter all the different options there as ad group level site link extensions so that's really how you're going to get the best results out of your campaign because if you create better ad extensions especially at the ad group level then google is going to basically reward you by increasing your quality scores because your campaign is going to be really relevant so the more relevant your ads are to what people are searching the better your campaign is going to perform it's going to help improve your ad rank and if you continue to improve your quality score over time, you can actually spend less per click because Google rewards the advertisers that create the best campaigns with highly relevant landing pages, really relevant advertisements, 
and a really high click-through rate, which is really done by creating organized campaigns. So that's basically site link extensions. I generally recommend adding them to your ad group level. It'll give you the best results for your campaign. So we're going to come down here. We're going to click on cancel. So next, I want to go through call-out extensions. So call-out extensions are just basically some text that you can add to your advertisement. So you can do something like top-rated farmhouse decor. So you could do shop our store free shipping and save 20% this month. So call it extensions I think are the best when you're actually running a promotion. So maybe you have a Black Friday sale or something like that. You can do Black Friday sale for your call out. And then you just have to make sure that you update it so then when the Black Friday sale is over, you update your call out extensions. You can also add these to the ad group level. So if you're doing something like farmhouse sinks, you can add under farmhouse sinks, you could do copper sinks stainless steel sinks and just the different types that there are fire clay sinks cast iron sinks so that people can see all the different options they have and the way ad extensions work is google isn't going to show them for every single advertisement but they're going to show ad extensions when it really makes your ad more relevant and as they test and optimize your advertisements the more call out extensions you have the more site link extensions you have really the better your campaign is going to perform so there's no reason not to add call out extensions to the campaign level to the ad group level you can add even add them to the ad account level so maybe you just want to do top rated farmhouse decor shop our store something like that to the account level and then every campaign you run is going to show that so just a couple different options with call out extensions Again, I would recommend adding these at least to the campaign level for sure. And then if you have relevant ones at the ad group level, you can do that as well. So call it extensions tend to be very popular for showing off different features you have, maybe a couple different promotions you have, really what people can find when they click through your advertisement. So we'll click on cancel here and show the next one. So next is structured snippets. So there's a lot of different options with structured snippets. So I showed you the example before um, with the marketing software. But what you can see here is header. You can choose a language. Um, so we're going to keep it as English. And then select header type. So amenities. So perfect for hotels, brands, courses, degree programs, destinations, featured hotels, insurance coverage, models, neighborhoods. So good for real estate, service catalog, shows, styles, types. So a lot of different options there. So to use the example of sinks again, you could do styles and you can do cast iron, stainless steel, fire clay. So there's a lot of different options there and you can continue to add values here. So structured snippets, just a great way to show off some different things that your brand or your website has to offer. So if you come into courses, so this is good for a college, they could do something like marketing, uh, business, administration, communication. So some different options there for just things you can show to people as they're searching for your advertisements. And it's really just to make your ads more relevant. So structured snippets allows you to add little blurbs of information to your advertisement. So we're going to click on cancel for that. So next is going to be call extension. So pretty self-explanatory. So you do create new United States, enter your phone number here. And then you can actually use call reporting. So what call reporting is going to do is allow forwarding numbers. So Google is going to create a different phone number where they can actually track how long a phone call lasts. So you can say you want to use conversion actions. It's going to say use account settings, calls from ads. You can just click on calls from ads as a conversion action. So anytime someone calls you, you can also set it up. So anytime a call lasts 60 seconds or longer, you set that up as a conversion. So you can make sure that you're actually tracking how well the phone calls perform. And then they also have call interaction bid adjustment. So it's going to be shown. So for example, you can increase your bid for when people are actually searching for you on a mobile device to try to get them to call your business directly. So really useful if you're trying to get phone calls. So a lot of businesses obviously do. So there's different ways to track phone numbers. Um, but call extensions are a great way to do it. So on mobile devices with call extensions, what people can do is just click the phone right there and call you directly and you just pay for that phone call. So every time someone clicks to call you, you pay for that individual phone call, which is generally a lot more valuable than just a click because someone's calling your business directly and hopefully visiting your store or taking advantage of one of your offers online. So call extensions, highly recommend setting this up if you're trying to receive phone calls. So with Surfside PPC, if I was running an advertisement to try to get new clients, I can do a phone number and people can call my phone directly. I can answer it and they can say, hey, I'm interested in PPC advertising services. 
and we can basically get the ball rolling. I can tell them my prices. So you definitely want to do call extensions. You always want to use call reporting. You can set up your conversions in different ways. Uh, you want to go to your manage conversions so you can set up how the calls work as a conversion. Um, they have a lot of different options there where you can set up a phone call with a specific duration and say if someone's on the phone for this long, we'll count it as a conversion. Or you could just say every call from a phone is a conversion, so you're just optimizing to get more phone calls for your business. So next is going to be message extensions. So rather than someone calling you directly, you could just have them send you a text message. So what you can do is say extension, create new, use your country code so you could do United States. So that means you're targeting people in the United States. And then you could do message delivery. So you could either do a phone number or email forwarding. So if you do email forwarding, all you need to do is enter your email address there. So what's gonna happen is someone can click on your text message extension just like that and it's gonna say, either a phone number up at the top or an email and it's going to say I'd like to know more please text me back and you'll get that message right away you can text people back right away so again just use Surfside PPC as an example I can get people to text me and say I'm interested so something like PPC advertising or so we could do something like text us about PPC advertising and then it'll say default customer message. I like to know more about PPC advertising services. Please text me back. So that's it, very simple. And then it'll have an auto reply message. So you can put thanks for contacting Surfside PPC. We'll get back to you shortly. So message extensions allows people to either text your phone directly or text and go to an email. It will forward it directly to an email address. And you can just get into contact with people right away. So basically just rather than a phone call, you're getting people to send you a message. So maybe it's a little bit easier for you to answer messages during the day. So I highly recommend setting up message extensions. Um, the main thing with call extensions and message extensions is when you're running advertisements, you need to make sure that you pick up your phone. You need to make sure that you're answering messages. Otherwise, you're wasting your budget. So if you need to hire someone to manage your different phone calls or any messaging to your business, then you need to do that. So if you're not able to do that, you need to hire somebody because I've worked with clients before who didn't answer their phones all the time. So they would be getting phone calls and saying, oh, we missed a couple of them. But really what you're ending up doing is potentially missing out on clients and missing out on new business. So message extensions, highly recommend setting them up if they're relevant for your business. So next one is going to be location extension. So this uses your Google My Business account. So what you need to do is go to google.com slash business. And what you can do is enter your location for your business. So if you have a business location, you enter that address. They're going to send something to that address so that you can verify that that is your business location. And then what you do is you get a Google business listing. So when someone searches your business, you actually have your Google My Business account come up. And then you can take that location and put it into your account so that people can see where your actual physical location is. So just to use a quick example here, so if I search Jiffy Lube, it's going to pull up Jiffy Lube Myrtle Beach, and right here is a location extension. So it's saying 10th Avenue North, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, open today. It shows their hours, so it's just pulling that in from Google My Business. So I highly recommend setting this up because then people can see exactly where your location is. Okay, so next we're going to go through, so affiliate location extension. So you can use this, for example, if you're selling your products at a different store. So if you go to general retailers and you click on select general retailers, United States, what it's going to do is pull up a bunch of different chains in the United States. So if you're selling your uh, auto parts at four wheel parts performance center you can select that click on done and then people know they can find your products at different stores near them um, so just a different way to show where people can buy your products and services especially as they search for them so you definitely want to use this um, because you can enter all these different information here and try to get people to buy your products if you're selling them at a specific store in the united states or in any of these 18 countries for right now so next is going to be price extension. So you can show specific prices for what people can buy from you. So if they show right here is the example. So it's going to say brand one, brand two. Under type, you can change this. So you can do product categories. So it's going to say baby gear, backpacks. So you can change it for, for different things. Now, the main thing is you want your price to match how much it costs for that service, for that product, whatever it is. So if I come into type here and I do services, what I can do under header, Let's say I do PPC advertising and I do $1,000 for units. I could do per month. So it costs $1,000 per month 
for PBC advertising services. Um, so you could enter a description down here as well. And then you can add more price extensions. So if I come through, I can say SEO services. So maybe that's $1,000 per month. So I enter $1,000 per month. So just a different way to show how much your services cost. And you can get make it very easy for people to understand how much they're going to have to pay you for your specific services, even before they click on your advertisement. So what's good about price extensions is it allows people to basically say, okay, that's too much for me before they click on your ad, rather than clicking on your ad, going to your website and saying, oh, well, I'm going to look for something a little bit cheaper. Um, so they really have a good understanding of how much it's going to cost for your products or services. So it's a great way to avoid people clicking on your ad and then going through and saying, oh, yeah, I wasn't interested in this. Actually, it's a little bit too much and it's out of my price range. So highly recommend setting up price extensions, especially if you have fixed prices for your products and services. So we'll click on cancel here, um, go to the next one. So next one is app extension. So if you have a mobile app, you definitely want to do this. So it's going to say create a new app extension, select the apps platform. You can select both if it's both or you can set them up one by one. And what you want to do is look up your app, enter the app name, package name, or publisher. Um, so you can enter it here. It's going to show up. And all you need to do is import your app, and it's going to show up as an app extension. So you'll see these a lot. If you're on a mobile device and you search TripAdvisor right now, the advertisement will probably come up with an app extension. So you can quickly download their app and just start using that rather than using their mobile website. So just another example, if you have a mobile app, you definitely want to use app extensions. Now, last but not least, is going to be a promotion extension. So we click on that. You can create specific promotions. So, for example, to use a Black Friday sale as the example, I can do Black Friday sale. We'll do percent discount, 20% off Black Friday sale. So someone can see that every time they search something related for your advertising. So if they search one of your keywords, um, so under occasion here, you could actually just click Black Friday. It'll show up right there. So Black Friday, 20% off Black Friday sale. So maybe the entire website, anything people purchase for that time period, they can get 20% off. So promotion extension, great way to get different promotions out there that you're running for your business. So I would recommend setting these up as well. Um, so you can set these up at the campaign level, ad group level. You can do that with a lot of the different extensions. So just make sure you check and set up extensions for your campaign for sure. Anything that is relevant for your campaign will only improve your overall results and ultimately improve your quality scores like I talked about earlier, which is going to help you get more and more out of your budget. So that's basically ad extensions. Um, you want to set up as many as possible that are relevant for your business. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching our video today and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.